Hi there folks, Borislav247 here with another Days Gone video and on this video I am going to show you all how to get one of the best primary weapons and one of the best special weapons that Days Gone has to offer as soon as you reach the Lost Lake region. Sounds too good to be true? Well, a lot of you will probably have already seen my early video where I managed to get my hands on the US 556 but take a look at this I already have the SMP9 from 4 Horde Kills, but you can also get a US 556 and an MG45 as soon as you reach Lost Lake. Now, just like in my previous video, I just want to show exactly where I am in the story. You can see right there, Sherman's Camp is crawling. That is the one of the first missions you will be asked to take on. I have no trust level at all in Lost Lake. And if I bring this over to Hot Springs, where you can potentially buy these two weapons that I'm going to get, I'm on trust level 2, so I couldn't get them right now even if I wanted to. But this is how it's all going to go down. Let's get straight to the action. Right then, I'm just about ready to rock and roll, but the first thing I want to point out is this. On this particular run, make sure that you have a suppressor for your sidearm or primary weapon, because you will need it. Now, here is the map that you will see as soon as you arrive at Lost Lake. Everything is basically blanked out. So, in order to get to the destination that you need to be at, I'm basically going to head over to this infestation sign, and you will always see this on the map because you pass this on your way to the Lost Lake camp. I basically zoom in on it, and then from there, I'm looking to go over to my left. Just keep going until I eventually get to this spot here and it's that bit that looks like a rectangle but it is actually a bridge and that is the route required to basically get to um, the one of the entrance points for Iron Butte so I'm just going to speed this up and uh, just move over to that area right now right then at this point I have reached the bridge that I marked on the map and from here, it's quite simply a case of just following the road and you will eventually get to this spot right here. And this is where you need to do a little bit of rock climbing. So, I am going to show three methods in order to get this done. Even though I showed them on the last video, it's definitely worth showing them again. Now, the three methods that I show are basically just the first part of the climb because it is a two-parter. Um, however, this first one I'm going to show, it does require the use of Nitros on your bike. Um, I can't stress this enough folks, this is probably the toughest one to pull off, although I make it look quite easy here. Uh, I had a number of failures in trying to get this one right. Uh, basically you're looking to catch that rock, and yes, the jobs are good. Now this is the one I expect most people to use. <laughs> it's a damn sight safer, but it is still tricky. Uh, you really do need to watch the line and it's all about that shadow at the top um, on that next rock is pretty much your guide in order to get uh, over to that section. And finally, there is a third method. Now, it's not the easiest to get started, uh, but once you get onto this rock section, it does become quite easy. Once you're at that point, then no problem, it's just navigating your way over these rocks. And even if you happen to hit that fall there, it's not a problem. I'm just walking deep all the time here, and that's it, jobs are good. So, now that I've demonstrated all three potential methods for the first part of the climb, let's get this done. I'm basically using method number two, and again, heading up here slowly. I'm just walking deep, and I'm not even using the accelerator. And then looking to catch that rock there, and then just get over onto that section there. And yes, I do make a bit of a cock up with uh, the landing there, but that's okay. Now, here comes climb number two, and this is far easier. I only need to show this one. So there is only one way really of getting this done. You basically uh, use this rock section here. Just uh, again, I like to just walk the bike with Deacon because you can do it a lot slower. And a lot safer and you're basically looking to get, to get to that left side of that rock area and there we go that is uh, myself onto the iron butte area 
But, as I mentioned in the last video, I like to get down to this road section here so that when I bring up the map, I can actually mark on the map where I'm going to be going to next. Because from that top section, you simply can't do it. But anyways, here, I'm looking at that bridge as my guide. And from there, just going right over to my left. And that area there is where the Iron Butte Horde resides. And I'm just going to put the marker on that rock right there. Because that rock is basically just to the left of the vehicle that has the US 556. So I'm just going to do a bit of fast travelling now. Okay, I'm not very far away. Because I showed this in greater detail on the last video, I am just trying to speed things up a touch because a lot of people will have already seen this, but I'm making sure that all the important information is still kept. You can see where I'm marking on the map and you can see the areas where I'm going to. And that is it. That is the US 556. A fantastic weapon to have this early. Um... The only other way you can possibly get it is by basically um, having level 3 trust at uh, Belknap. But now I'm looking basically to head back to where I came from. And that section of the road there is the perfect marker. Because from there, that's where it's going to start to get um, interesting. And this is where all the new stuff's going to come in. Right then, now that I have the US 556 and I'm now back pretty much where I started uh, in the Iron Butte region certainly, I'm now looking to head to another very important destination indeed. And it's just basically following this road and it will eventually take you to around where I'm going to be marking this right here because just below that marker is the Rogue Tunnel Nero checkpoint. And this one is rather unique given the time that I am actually uh, in this particular area. And I'll explain a little bit more about this when uh, I basically get to it. As you can see, I am going to show this full uh, <laughs> journey because it's a very quick one. I'm quite literally heading over this way. And then when I get to this point here, you get a fantastic view of this particular Nero checkpoint. And this is what makes the Nero checkpoint so uh, unique because I'm showing, first of all, the Redwood RV Park uh, ambush camp. And you can see, it's empty. There's nobody here. <laughs> but there's also a second ambush camp in uh, Iron Butte and this is the Wagon Road ambush camp. And again, you can go right in. There is simply nobody here. As you can see, quite clearly. So, when I finally got to this uh, Nero checkpoint for the first time, I got the shock of my life, because this bit is loaded with rippers. All the rippers that you would normally expect to see when you arrive at Iron Butte and uh, take on this for the first time, they are still here. And the beauty of this is, one of the rippers is a ripper heavy. And he carries an MG45. And that is what all this uh, carnage coming up next is going to be for. And uh, to be perfectly honest, for the best part of about 10 minutes work, if you're lucky from, from once you reach Lost Lake, the fact that you can end up having a weapon combination of the SMP9, the US556 and the MG45, yeah, it really... It just makes Deacon um, OP in terms of uh, taking on the Lost Lake uh, region. In fact, truth be told, with that weapon, uh, with that weapon selection, God, you can roll through the frickin' south, let alone the bloody north. <laughs> so, right now, I am quite literally, I'm not even doing this in any particular order. I'm just taking them out as I see them. I've sort of taken out a few on this side, but now I'm just going to move over this way and uh, just start picking off any that I can uh, find. And I'm looking around here and, yeah, probably the one that I just took out before, he was probably, he probably walked down a bit further. Um, but there should be one up around here. There we go, very nice. 
and there will not be that many more left. I know there's always one that's up in a high point on this side. Um, I'm just checking to see if there's any more nearby here. No, that's still one right over there that I was referring to. So there is a nice section here that I can uh, just get into hide myself. And that's the beauty. I've got this uh, camp here to take out, well, the checkpoint to take out. And uh, I've already picked up one of the best weapons you can get to do it because the US 556 is exceptionally accurate. Now, even if I didn't have a suppressor, this could still be done. You'd have to be, um, <laughs> you'd have to take out quite a number of them quite quickly. Would be a tad more dangerous, but uh, no, there we go. That is the main guy that I was looking for. And here we go. Where is it? MG45. Thank you so much. Now, although I don't have much in the way of ammunition for the MG45, that's not a problem. When I get back to Lost Lake, or Cascade, or Belknap, it's fine. I can get everything um, basically uh, taken care of in terms of ammunition. So, at this point, the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a petrol can. And I'm just going to throw it over by the generator because I want to turn on this uh, particular Nero checkpoint. And for very good reason. Uh, so now that that's uh, over there, I am looking for, first of all, there is two sets of lights that have speakers attached here. That's one of them. And where's the next one? Holy shit, there's still one of these flipping rippers in, in this camp. I keep on saying camp, it is a bloody checkpoint, Boris, come on. And there he is. I need to get this one reasonably quickly, especially as I'm right beside an explosive barrel. Okay, that should definitely be it. There we go, that is the second speaker. So basically, once I've got those two off, that's fine. Then I know there is just one at uh, the front end here, which needs to come off. And the last speakers for this particular uh, checkpoint are basically on the narrow buildings over there. Uh, and of course there is two of them, so just need to make sure that these are all taken care of, so I'll start with the one at the back first. Now, I will loot the rippers later on, because the rippers usually have a fantastic amount of uh, good quality items that you can use. Unlike Marauders, where you sometimes get a bit lucky when you're taking out uh, ripper camps or <laughs> areas uh, like checkpoints that are uh, manned by rippers. Yeah, you can get all sorts. Grenades, pipe bombs, attractors. Yeah, usually pretty damn good. But I will loot them all later. So there we go. I'm pretty damn confident that I don't need to do anything else here. So it's quite literally a case of getting over here and then getting some uh, petrol in this uh, bad boy and then uh, getting this uh, checkpoint up and running. Busted. So yeah, here just a go. very quick repair here that still has to be done. But there's no fuses required or anything yeah. like that that you have to find for this one. So it is quite literally a case of, yeah, there we go. Now, the first one in here, uh, I know that uh, the box I'm looking for is not in here, but I'm just having a quick check to see if there's anything else. I'm actually quite good on items on uh, this particular playthrough. So into this one right here. And the box will pre up There it is right there. And yes, on this particular run, everything is in play, so it's going to be more focus. I always mm. go for that first before stamina and then health, unlike my current playthrough. <laughs> right then, at this point, I've taken the time to get more fuel in the bike. I have looted all the rippers, and at this point, I've got two options. Now, if you are unlucky enough to be playing this on Survivor 2, this is what you're going to have to do. Basically, head back over to this area right up here 
and then from there that section right there is basically where you will use to get the bike back onto the area that you need to basically get to Lost Lake. However, if you have the luxury of fast travel, yep, <laughs> you can just get straight out of there. And there we go. As you can see, the fast travel from the Iron Butte region works absolutely fine. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty much now back to where I was at the beginning of this video. So basically, get off the bike here and just uh, show what I have. The US 556, the SMP9 and the MG45. But of course, the beauty of this is now that any time that I want to go back to the Iron Butte region, it's not a problem. I just bring up the map, select the rogue tunnel near a checkpoint and it will let me fast travel. And as you can see, there is no problems getting back to Iron Butte whatsoever. And the beauty is I can return here any time that I like. And this could come in handy. So I'm going to finish with this. Take full advantage of this region at this point because some of the areas will look a tad different to what you may see them later on. For example, in this area as well. While you're here, why not place down a mine or two? You never know when these might come in handy. <laughs> also take the time to take in some of the fantastic views. And from here, of course, I can see over to Carlos's HQ. So why not take the time to spend a little time over here as well? If you feel like it, why not? Maybe just set up a few traps here and there. Never know when they might come in handy. Just a few things to think about there, folks. But that brings me very nicely to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Take care.